All right, everyone, we're going to run some mono green Tron. Uh, one of the decks I play a lot of, and I could probably use some more reps with right now, just because we got the IQ this upcoming weekend, and uh, the side in between this and Scape Shift, or Breach Shift. Um, I haven't really done too much of this list. I still like it pretty much where it's at. Um, lands the same, still 19. I'm on four force, and then my outlier here is uh, Urza's Factory. And then I'm on three relics, four worm coils, and uh, two ballistas, and no world breaker. So those are kind of the different cards you'll notice from other lists. Everything else is pretty stock. Four stirrings, four scryings, four spheres, four stars, four maps, four O stones, um, four carns, two Ugans, and two Ulamogs. Uh, over on the sideboard, uh, similar to last time, we're on the three Nature's Claim, three Thrag Tusk, three Thought Knots. Two Spatial Contortions, two Warping Whales, and one Relic, and one Crucible. Now, I am really interested in trying out that new, um, the, the new Ugin, the one that makes uh, things cheaper. Um, so I'll be excited once that comes out and we can play around with it. Uh, we're just going to jump into the Comp League here. So yeah, that card I think has a lot of potential. Um... I'm actually really excited for Eldrazi Tron when the new set drops here because that uh, that Ratchet Bomb land seems really interesting to play around with. And then... Alrighty. We will take the play. I do not want that hand. This hand's not great, so we're gonna mold this as well. Hmm, this hand's also not great. Mm -mm -mm. I think we're going to four. I will keep this four. All right, so we want to keep mine, map. Um, I mean, yeah, mine, map, tower, Karn. So we don't care about the rest. This is this is all Tron wants. This is everything we want in our world in the world. <laughs> this mulligan is fun. I'm actually a big fan of this mulligan so far. Every time I've played with it, I feel like I get much better games. Um, and you get less of those non-games. Some of the decks obviously are stronger here, but overall I am a fan. So we're gonna grab the power plant here. We've got turn three Karn, which is pretty sweet. Always excited for that. I feel like this is loud, but maybe that's just me. They're drawing cards, sure. See how lucky we are. See if we took them off the black source they need. Nope. Tick up here so we don't so we can keep the carn. We'll pass it over. This deck feels like it got a lot better too with the change. 
good for them. See if they kill us here. Metamorphose, bring back Bobovmos, and then kill us. And we're dead. What a tragedy. <laughs> All right, we want to bring in the Relic here. I want to bring in the Thought Knots as well. Um, those are the biggest things I want to bring in. Try to just rip their hand apart as much as possible. Um, Warping Whale can slow down some of their spells, so that's not the worst thing in the world here. We can hit their cantrips, um, their draw spells. So. <laughs> I don't really care for Ugin in this matchup, so the stuff they're bringing back is not really that big of a concern. Um, Ulamog as well here. Now, Ballista is kind of interesting because you can hold up Ballista and cast it, and then it prevents them from going down too low. But um, I think that's relevant enough over the worm coils here. So we'll bring all this in and we'll try it like that. Mm -mm. If we had one more land, this could possibly work. Keeping it as is is a bit of a stretch here. Yeah, we're going to have to ship this. Um, This, I guess we can keep a little bit more so than not. Because uh, we've got a little bit of interaction. We've got a little bit of extra draw. Um, don't really like it. We're not forming Tron with his hand is the problem. Um, and any time you're not forming Tron, you're not in a good spot. So we've also got no graveyard hate either. So this is this is not where we want to be. Yeah, you know, as much as I think this is an okay hand, I don't think this is good enough to keep. Like we're going against a pretty fast combo deck here. And we can't keep a mediocre hand and hope that it's good enough. Like, best case is what we're dropping Thought Not on turn four. Um, with the way this hand's uh, set up right now. We don't, like, we only have one Tron piece. Yeah, I, we're gonna ship this. Opponents uh, must be deciding on how to crush us. Um, 
and Stream Decker. having quite the conundrum here on how to proceed with life. <gasps> this is much more reasonable. So we'll keep this. And we know we want to keep the power plant and the tower and the relic here. Um, the stirrings and the sylvan scrying are also pretty important. Uh, to trip, as long as we can get a green source. So I think we're going to ship out the ballista and the worm coil. We can get one more draw here. I know the relic's not bad, but we really need a green source right now. At the end of their turn, we may pop a relic, just depending on what their mana situation is looking like. annoying. We'll pop a relic. Yeah, Ostone's good. Um, map, we can get a green source and then scrying or stirrings into more land, try to get to that Ostone mana. See if they don't just kill us right now. Okay. Don't really want to pop the relic just to a world spine trigger. Kind of through the breach us is the big problem. Chalice on one makes our life harder. Okay, we're gonna have to crack the map here. Go get a force. Forced out, and I think we're just gonna have to pass it over. Breach. It's a breach. And that's a crystal brand, and we should be dead as long as they don't brick. Oh wow. Oh, 
I've got a whole lot of cards to discard. though is that we've got a ways off until we hit O Stone Mana because uh, we'd have to cast Sylvan Scrying in this next turn and it, that would leave us with only two mana so we can't actually bring a put up the O Stone. Um, so we're in a bit of an awkward spot. I would imagine they have another through the breach to try to end the game next turn. Gristle brands and two Gorios. Well, we're kind of still that scrying. Go get ourselves a mine. And I don't think we can really do much here. Anything we're going to cast here is going to get countered. We don't got enough mana for the O Stone. And we'd rather just hold up the relic, I suppose. There is a chance they're gonna Gorios us and respond to that Gorios, but I don't think we can do much about that. So we need to hit a land within these next two draws. They're gonna cast Simeon Spirit Guy. What is going on with their hand? <laughs> the land we can run out the o stone hold up the relic and then we can pop o stone next turn follow that up with karn see if that's good enough the hand must have been crazy <laughs> that gets countered by Chalice. Are they seriously just passing it to us? This is, this is crazy. What is going on? Uh, okay, so the thing here is that if we activate Relic, they could go off in response. Um... They'd have to have the Gorios, but they can't get Borgmos, and Gristlebrand really won't do anything, so I think we're fine um, to do it. So let's go here. We'll pop the Relic. Cause I, if we activate Ozone, we won't be able to get the Relic unless we draw a land. We happen to draw the land, but it's a whole other conversation, I suppose. All right, so we're just going to pass it here, hold up the Ozone, so then we can bring uh, take out care of any creature that they try to bring out. And if they want to swing at us just for two, we'll take the two. This is this hard casting Gristle Brand? They sure are. Okay. Ooh. 
what a what a weird game this has been. Okay. So the safe play that can kill their creatures is just doing the O stone, which is most likely what we're gonna do here. Why don't we stirrings first though? Sanctum. Mm -mm -mm. I think worm coil is just fine. And then we can run out our run out our O stone here. We're going to tap for a sphere. Generate some green. Oh, yeah. That's great. If we, so if we didn't cast the, uh, the O-Stone, would that have been lethal? Six. Yeah, that would have been exactly lethal. Should have cracked that first, but hindsight and all that. Uh, we'll go stirrings here. Oh, that's pretty sweet. Casting thought not. Well, let us take care of any like through the breaches they might have in their hands still. But O stone seems like just the safer route, so let's just pass it over. We'll hold up O stone. If it comes back to our turn, we'll just ballista them and win. Digging to see if they can get three lands and then go for the Gorios. Can't list of them to kill them anymore. Um, we can thought not rip a card another hand, drop a worm coil. We didn't draw the land. If we had to draw a land, we would be able to carn and worm coil, which would have been pretty sweet. I think we have to thought not here. Take the through the breach. And then 
We'll drop a warm coil. Then I'm actually going to drop the ballista on one here. The reason being is we'll be able to block with thought knot and ballista and shoot it and actually kill another worm. So we'll block a worm, trade with another worm, and then only take the five with the uh, six life gain. We'll just have a net gain of one. No matter how we block. What a tragedy. Almost had it. And we did a technical punt. Which is unfortunate. Could have had that game fight in tap out for the O stone um, beforehand. So. It's a bit of a bummer. So I'm pretty excited. I'm done with my class now. Um, so I got a little bit of time off from school before my next set of classes start up. Which is always nice. Uh, this hand's great. We've got uh, two charm pieces, a star into a scrying, and then we've got a couple payoffs. So happy with that. Which is pretty awesome. Got ourselves a mine. We'll be able to play two of the best threats in our deck next turn. One of them, and anyway, not both of them. Some kind of Mardu pile. Let's do the reasonable thing and play a Karn. And we'll exile their Blood Crypt. Because we play reasonable spells. Tap three lands, get a Karn, exile a land. Still not casting anything, so we'll go up. And we're just going to plan on dropping a worm coil here and then a star and passing. through the bridge. Playing another Gorios through the breach deck. How lucky for us. <laughs> I feel like it's really bad for playing testing right now because everybody's playing very different decks because of the London Mulligan. Well, they didn't hit a land, so we're going to get rid of their Godless Shrine. Go 
combat. They're not through the breach. And a gristle brand. We swing, they block, they gain life, we gain life. We lose our worm coil. Don't swing, they don't gain life. I think their gaining life is more important than us gaining life, so we're not gonna swing. And then we're gonna go green here. Hit the stirrings. Fantastic. Um, hit another tower, or we can go car a worm coil. We can cast the other worm coil, but I don't think really that's that big of a deal. We don't have the mana to cast the Karn. Otherwise, we would take that and just exile the other land. So I think we're just going to take the tower here. And then play it. So then we can run out an O-Stone if we need it. And then we're also going to run out the Relic here. And we'll pass it over to them. We've got them in a good bind here, I think. They burnt three simians there in order to get the Gristlebrand out, so they really just have the Goriel's Vengeance, and that's it. And if they activate that, we'll just respond with Relic, so. same game plan take out the Ugans take out the Ulamogs and we'll take out two worm coils here we'll bring all this in and we'll run it back no lands here an easy ship Hand's not bad, honestly. It relies on this stirrings finding the proper land here, but then we'll be able to go relic. I think we're gonna chance this. And I'm gonna ship this sphere here away. Lucky. Oh, they want to play odds of that. Brutality's fine, they can either take the stirrings or the scrying. If we're super lucky, we'll get another land here, so it won't matter what they take, but uh if they do take the stirrings, which is what I would suspect. Oh, they took the scrying. Wow, okay. So like I feel like I would have taken the stirrings there just in case this you know, if I'm against this person, they won't they don't draw the other land, then the scrying is just dead. So power plant. 
Next turn, we're most likely just going to play the Relic and uh, play the Tower and pass turn. And then that way we can crack Relic if we need to. Otherwise, we'll fetch up the other uh, Tron piece. That is fine with us if they want to go that Goryeo's route. Much fairer, and we can keep up with Obsidian, I think. Said. I think the game plan here is that we're just going to tower, we'll bring out a relic, we'll target them, and we'll pass it over. This way we can crack the relic and get the Tron piece. Um, we're going to go to four here. have 10 mana. If we run out O-Stone, we'll be able to crack it and get rid of the Obsidat. If we play Thought Knot, it'd just be able to chump, and that's pretty much it. We'll still get drained, so we're going to be going to 2 next turn, so I think we have to run out the O-Stone. <laughs> so we're just dead when this gun enters the battlefield. <laughs> oh, how sad. Oh, this is. Yeah, we're just dead. <laughs> If I'm being on this game plan, I think I want to bring back in the worm coils. Um, and I uh, might not even want the thought knots here. I think I might just play the frag tusk. Um. <laughs> oh, man. This hand is. And with this hand, I think we're actually going to ship the Warping Whale. We can go Mind Map, crack it, form Tron, drop the Worm Coil, next turn play Stirrings, and see if we can find another threat.
it over. We can just cast opposite right now or through the breach. Well, that's an Emrakul. We're gonna sacrifice everything, get some three threes. <laughs> See if our two turn clock is good enough. I guess it was good out of all of our threats we had worm coil. Because it could leave behind tokens for us. <laughs> I am on this unplayable garbage again. I feel like we're just gonna counter that. Well, that was a weird match. <laughs> uh, This hand can form Tron on turn five. It's pretty bad. We're gonna send it away. This hand's not farming Tron very reasonably either. We'll keep this. All right, what are we gonna, we're down to five cards. 
So we're going to keep the tower and the power plant for sure. And then I think we're just keeping the cantrips, I think, to be honest. So. You almost decked yourself with your EDH deck? How'd you manage to do that? Living Death, Yard Full of Dudes, Bring Back Critter Huff, and Zagana, among other things. You had Panharmonica, so you drew 52 cards. Oh, man. Good thing you had 56 and not uh, 51. Is, and is that with you stacking the triggers to the best of your ability so you wouldn't draw as many, or was that you going like crazy and then going, I'm going to draw all the cards? assembled and we'd be able to form Tron and die good stuff good stuff all right we want to bring in the warping whales the contortions the thrag tusk and the thought knots um, I think this is mono red Phoenix but I'm not a hundred percent that was you going nuts yeah it, it felt like you were going nuts if you were if you were doing all of that So we don't need the any of our t like big top end because it's not really where we're at in this game. We just want to like clog up the board as much as possible and slow them down. Um, and that's why we're bringing in all these creatures. Taking out all of those. Ugin's not really that great either. Ostone has some relevancy by taking the spells out of their hand, so we're going to take out two Ostones and then the third Ostone. We'll bring all of this in. We'll try it like that. So were you reasonable and you actually counted the amount of cards you had left? Or were you like, I'm going for it? We'll see if I have enough once I just start drawing all these cards. the sphere here over the expedition map because we get one extra draw if we go this route. Mm. 
Woot. Just got my final grade from my class. Got an A. I love A's, by the way. It was Phoenix. Alrighty, so what we're gonna do here is scrying and we'll fetch up a mine. And then next turn we can map for oh, the other piece. So it's funny because like at the beginning of this class that I was taking, um, I was just getting like 100% on all the assignments, the teacher seemed pretty excited about the work and was giving me a lot of comments and reviews and stuff. And like as it went later on, the reviews came less and less. Ooh, we've got Tron. That's good. So we can actually map for a, uh, a green source now. Then she started like dinging me. Um, like on one, like one assignment, she randomly just took off like a, a 0.5 of uh, the assignment's value. And I didn't like no comments, so I like don't know why she gave me it. And I didn't really want to ask either because I, I don't know, I didn't really feel like it mattered all that much. Blood Moon is annoying here, but we will be able to cast um, Thrag Tusk in two turns. With a tragic contortion in thought not. Okay. Oh, we're just gonna play the forest. Pass it over. We'll see if a single thrag tusk is enough to take over the game. Might be bringing back in those O stones. We might want to consider the into claims. I feel weird about Relic here because it only hits a couple of their cards where I really just want to play the bigger threats and not have to worry about it. Yeah, I can't cast Thought. Can't cast Thought. Can't cast this Contortion. It's really a sad day. But they are down to two cards. One card. And we're going to go to nine, go back up to 14. That's really not bad. Oh, I forgot about the Phoenix. So we've got to find an answer to that. And I think no matter what, it starts with us dropping the Thrag Daddy. So next turn we have the option of either stirrings or sylvan scrying into a forest into stirrings. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that new Ugin. I think he's going to do great work. I know that I already want to possibly put him in the side for Tron. I might put, put like one or two in the main, but I just don't know how strong he is quite yet. Because he's technically just making two twos to start with. Ooh, that's another Thrag Daddy. I think we're just going to be on that game plan for now, then. Commence the beats. So I'm really not as impressed with the mono red Phoenix version as compared to the blue red Phoenix version. I like, it. I just like the blue red Phoenix version so much more. Okay, I think we're gonna Sylvan scrying here first. We're gonna go get another force to thin out our deck just a little bit more, and then we'll stirrings. That is a worm coil and a ballista. 
We could Ballista for two and then just go on the meet down plan. Or we can take the Worm Coil and swing next turn. I think we're good with take the Ballista here. And that way we're representing the ability to kill off their Phoenix if we need to. Otherwise we can just swing at them for 10. Yeah, I think being able to gun down that Phoenix is going to be pretty important. Yeah, the cost reduction is really awesome. I am such a big fan of that. Like, I'm curious how, how crazy you're going to be able to go with that. shooting them I don't think because they're at eight already so now they're getting their Phoenix back they can only swing with one bad. Chromatic Star wouldn't let us uh, get uh, colorless mana. Okay. Well, we're swinging here. Yeah, there's just a lot of good things happening on that Ugin. Whether it's the value portion of getting those 2-2s two -two that you get to just turn into cards later on. Or the reduction. Or the ability to hit your colored, the colored permanents. That's like, it's just perfect. Are we dead to like a gut shot? Or oh, lava spike. Well, that's unfortunate. Oh, so in hindsight there, we could have won if we just held, grabbed the Ballista and held it in hand, um, swung, and... Yeah. Which Graveyard Hate is better for 8-Rack? Um, I guess it kind of depends on what you're looking for that removal to do, right? Like, do you want to be able to cast it without paying the mana? Or are you more interested in being able to exile multiple things out of their deck? against humans. No, I would agree. I wouldn't want to do both because they're kind of on opposite ends of what you're looking for. So I think historically the 
eight racks decks have um, run surgicals and they've run Tormod's Crypt. I don't think they've leaned as heavily on Leyline. Um, but there are like there are like I'm seeing I'm seeing a, a top eight deck list from the uh, uh, Brooklyn IQ that ran four ley lines. Um, and then the comp league that went 5-0 ran four ley lines. And then this other one ran four lines. Now, they're still running some number of surgicals, which I think is crazy. So. I think if we play Warm Coil, we're asking to get blown up by Reflector. But if we play Karn this turn, we can't play it next turn to get the Sanctum value. Oops. So as a result, I think we are going to run out the Worm Coil because I want to be able to Karn. But yeah, I mean, even if other decks are running four ofs or the surgicals, I think it comes down to the meta you're expecting and what you want to hate out on. That worm crow is so getting reflected. Oh no, Anafenza. I'm okay with Anafenza. I definitely think if you're playing online and you're playing with the London Mulligan, you should be on. Uh, ley lines because I think with the London Mulligan the ley lines are just at a premium I guess the next big question would be, what are your thoughts on whether you should be running Lady Lion or Surgical? Other than the fact that you don't want to be running both. Yeah. If 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 that um, if they if the London Mulligan becomes the full time Mulligan here, it's going to be pretty crazy. Taking a bunch of damage, can't drop the worm coil. We're gonna drop the Karn, exile the Anafenzo. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, Ballista also works to slow them down. And it can trigger Sanctum here. If we want it to. We might just want to have it for five, which is what I'm thinking. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, like the graveyard decks, um, surgical is always nice because you're going to be able to take out any of their duplicate items. Um, where ley line, a lot of times they can play around, they can wait until they feel like they can go off, and then they can just blow it up. So. Okay. They are pressuring us pretty well. Next turn here, or this turn here, we're going to have to decide how we want to shoot things down. I think we may just be blocking the Anafenza and taking out the Lieutenant and the Thalia. And that way we only take three. And then we can drop Karn, exile the Anafenza.
And that's this rider I'm imagining. Yeah. Okay. It means we're going to be taking six here instead. So I think that we're dead now, no matter what we do. If we shoot down Thalia's lieutenant right now, they can copy Mantis Rider. We can block um, one creature here. We can block the Anafenza, and we can shoot something else for three, but then we'd still be taking nine. Oh, they're going to go for the Reflector. And then that still means lethal for us, because then when we shoot down two creatures, we'll still be taking that bunch of damage, so that's over. I don't think you need to splash uh, white. Your, your deck's pretty restrictive already on mana, if I remember correctly, because you have to run um, the Mutal Vaults right. And so if you're going to be introducing white into the mix too, I think that's just going to punish you a little bit more than you really want. And you do have a bunch of spells that are double black. Um, in both mainboard and sideboard. So I don't know if it's really worth it. If you're doing it just for a rip here, like, just play Leyline. All right, gonna take out the Relics, bring in the Contortions and the Thrag Tusk. Take up the Ulamogs. Like, if you want to splash white for other things, I think that's fine. But if it's only for rip, I don't know if I would do it. Ah, uh, this hand's fine. We'll ship the map here because we've got Tron already. Now I'm going to play the Thrag Tusk here because I want to be able to crack that and play and get the other card here. Yeah, I think Blue Black Mill is getting more popular, but it's still very new. I mean, like in day two of Cleveland, there was only one um, Blue Black Mill deck. Rebooter means we no longer have an O stone. <laughs> you get your best friend into uh, the game, they play your best matchup. Hey, as long as they're playing, man, I'm I'm the biggest reason I play this game is for hanging out with your friends and playing stupid levels of magic. Mm -mm. Consolidate scrying. I think we're just gonna go get a factory here. And then drop a worm coil.
<laughs> yeah, he chose a real deck. You know, I I like Titan Shift a lot. I you know I think it's a it has been a forever tier two deck as some of the people have put it, and it's a it's a solid deck. And I mean, right now I'm a big fan of it, obviously, because I'm on the Breach Titan version. Bounce Worm Coil. <laughs> Just passing it here. You know, to be fair, protect the uh, the booty is a sweet name. <laughs> yeah, it, it is a really cheap deck. That's I think the best part about it right now. You can just jump into modern for a fairly reasonable cost compared to some of the decks in modern that are just insane. Just swinging with flyers. Okay. What's up, Godrys? Thanks for joining me. Draw a card here. So I think we we have to play Worm Coil and create the token right now. Yeah, if they were to jump into Amulet Titan right away, I don't think they would have enjoyed Modern as much, unless they're really good with um, intricate decks, because that is a complicated deck. I picked up the deck, and I still haven't played it, and I really should, because it's a really good deck right now. Thanks for following Gangorka. Much appreciated, man. I need something to wipe the board. <laughs> oh. When am I playing? Sunday? You mean Saturday? Uh, right now, I am about 70 to 80 percent on uh, Breach Shift again. I think we have to Ghost Quarter our own tower in order to get the green source to cast this Thrag Tusk. We'll pass it over. I could just play Tron again, but I don't know. I still don't feel great about Tron right now. I know that it's still doing well and getting uh, placements, but... Mm, we're just dead in the air. We sure are.
We'll play this last match, but unfortunately we didn't make money. We've got Tron. Why do you think I should be on a different deck right now over Breach Shift, Reese? That was quite a rude of our opponent. Uh, yes, there is. Give me one second. Try out the warping wheels. There's a couple times in that last match where I could have used it and got rid of a relevant threat. Hand forms Tron, but it's pretty slow and there's no payoffs. I think we'll keep it. Um, I just linked the list of, that's the one that I played in uh, Cleveland. And yeah, I'm a big fan of Chalice right now. Um, and that's the reason I'm on this version of it. Um, it allows me, I should have played the, um, that was a misclick because it wasn't. So I should have played the map on turn one because it's it can pl get the, fetch up the lands through Athalia. And I was just clicking, going through the motion, so. That was bad. Um, yeah, so that was my list there. And I was pretty happy with that deck. Uh, there was only a couple cards that I wasn't that impressed with over the weekend, unfortunately. Okay, we're going to get a green here. And we'll form Tron. And we'll pass it over. It's a damping sphere, and we're okay with that. Not great for us, but we've got an O stone, and as long as they don't kill us, we're back in this game. Or if they don't detention sphere, this one as well. 
So, um, the main deck, I don't think I'd be changing too much. I actually really liked how it ended up playing out. Um, then the side, uh, I was probably going to cut one a braid and add in a Crossing Grip off a recommendation from a friend. We actually tried that version the other day. And I'm probably going to take out Thrun. Um, I was supposed to play a... I think we're just dead. Yeah, we are just, we're just dead. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd probably take out one, uh, one a braid for a crossing grip, and then the Thrun um, was supposed to be a Carnage Tyrant, but I'm not even sure I would play the Carnage Tyrant at this point. Yeah, it's a blast to play. The, the fact that you can just go breach primeval titan get two uh, valid cut swing get two more lands hit them for 12 hit and then hit them with uh six with a titan to 18 them is really really awesome uh so this hand's slow but it's got an interaction spell and we're gonna be able to farm tron on turn four i think i'm okay with keeping this Yeah, Tyrant's pretty pretty great from everything I've read about it and what it's gonna do. Um, just the fact that it sits there, but and is this really strong threat. I tried a version where I cut the damping spheres because I wasn't as impressed with them, um, so I can increase the chalice count to three, um, and that might be what I would want to do again. So I think we're gonna exile their noble. You've been on the world's largest sushi kick. <laughs> Had it three times in the past week. That's pretty intense. I go. I, I love sushi, but I get like sushi like once a week. I mean, uh, once a uh, once at most once a week, not always once a week. So if we play map, we can't crack it until the following turn. So I think what we're going to do here is just stirrings and we'll grab the land and then we'll run out the map. Where are you going for your uh, sushi right now? Any particular spots you're liking in uh, the area? I've got a couple favorite spots that I always hit up. Our friend owns a sushi restaurant. I almost like, I love sushi. It's really fantastic. But a lot of times when I'm getting sushi, I want to get a, like a cocktail as well. And they don't serve any drinks. And I think that's really the only reason I don't go there as often as I normally would. Back this, get a tower, play the tower, play the sphere, crack the sphere, and pass it over. You can play through a kite sail. You can either take Ugin and Sphere, which we're indifferent on.
gonna go to two here. Yeah, I've been there. Um, I had a pretty good experience. Um, I, I went there just for the ramen. My friends went there for the sushi and they gave me a bite. We're gonna go one and they named our ballista. Uh, oh no, we, we're just dead. All right, well, that wasn't great. Uh, let's change and go over to uh, breach shift here. And we're going to mess with the list a little bit. Okay. I think I'm good with this version. Let's stop the recording.